Part 1 of the video demonstration describes the role of endoscopic ultrasound, EUS, and EUS-guided fine needle biopsy, FNB, for the diagnosis of distant metastasis in primary staging of pancreaticobiliary and upper gastrointestinal cancer. Cytopathological proof of distant metastases dramatically changes therapeutic management and prognosis of patients with pancreaticobiliary and gastrointestinal cancer. To avoid false positive diagnoses, EUS FNB should follow an inverse TNM schedule. Following this sequence, the same needle may be used subsequently for biopsies of a local regional lymph node or of a potential pancreatic primary itself. The first case describes a 78-year-old man presenting with weight loss and abdominal pain. Transabdominal ultrasound shows a large hypoechoic mass lesion of the pancreatic tail and body, but no solid liver lesions. Computed tomography confirms the large pancreatic mass encasing the celiac trunk and hepatic artery, but also detects several small hypodense liver lesions, highly suspicious for metastases. From a position in the upper gastric body longitudinal EUS, the huge hypoechoic mass lesion and adjacent hypoechoic lymph nodes are shown. Turning the scope counterclockwise, the left liver lobe is visualized. Liver parenchyma is heterogeneous and a 1 cm solid lesion is delineated very well. EUS-guided fine needle biopsy is performed using a 22-gauge aspiration needle. Three needle passes are performed and the lesion is fanned by the needle several times. Semi-liquid material is smeared onto glass slides and small tissue cores are fixed in formaline solution. Both cytological and histological examinations give evidence of metastasis of a poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma. In particular, periodic acid shift staining finally depicts the malignant infiltration of liver tissue. Pre-therapeutic tumor stage, therefore, is CT4, CN1, PM1. The second case illustrates the potential of EUS to detect and prove occult liver metastases. A 75-year-old patient presented with obstructive jaundice caused by a small mass lesion of the ampullary region. Endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, ERCP, was performed and the distal bile duct stricture was drained using a plastic endoprosthesis. Longitudinal endoscopic ultrasound shows the hypoechoic mass lesion of the papilla, slight dilatation of the pancreatic duct, and effective drainage of the bile duct. Withdrawal of the scope to the stomach allows visualization of the left liver lobe, showing a small subcentrometric hypoechoic mass lesion, which was not shown by ultrasound and CT previously. Using a 22 gauge aspiration needle, EUS guided fine needle biopsy is performed. Several studies have shown that EUS guided biopsy of liver lesions is effective and safe, with a complication rate of approximately 2.3%. Histology of the small liver lesion proves metastatic infiltration with an undifferentiated cancer. A 58-year-old patient complains about vomiting, bloating and weight loss. Gastroscopy results in a diagnosis of poorly differentiated cancer of the gastric antrum and body. CT shows marked thickening of the gastric wall, but no liver metastases. However, enlarged mediastinal lymph nodes and a small nodule of the right lung are found, 
suspicious for distal malignant spread. Longitudinal EUS shows malignant infiltration involving all layers exceeding the muscularis propria without penetrating the serosa, corresponding to a tumor stage CT3. Large infracarinal lymph nodes with focal hypoechoic infiltration are depicted and sampled using a 22-gauge aspiration needle. Care is taken to target the small hypoechoic areas within the lymph node, which are suspected to harbor small metastatic infiltrations. Histology shows anthracotic lymph node tissue and a so-called anthracosis granuloma, but no malignant infiltration. However, smear cytology demonstrates a group of atypical glandular epithelia. This finding is indicative for mediastinal lymph node metastasis and pre-therapeutic tumor classification is CT3-CN0 PM1. Due to iron deficiency anemia and weight loss, gastroscopy is performed on a 63-year-old female patient. A tumor of the gastric cardia is found, and endoscopic biopsy proves adenocarcinoma. Besides wall thickening of the gastroesophageal junction, CT shows small cysts and two suspicious lesions of the left liver lobe. Longitudinal EUS is performed and shows infiltration far beyond the gastroesophageal wall with penetration of the gastric serosa and esophageal adventitia, small amounts of ascites, and an adjacent lymph node metastasis. Local tumor stage, therefore, is CT4A, CN1. Moreover, EUS gives proof of solid liver lesions in the vicinity of small liver cysts, which are harder compared to liver parenchyma. Using a 22-gauge aspiration needle, a biopsy of the suspicious liver lesion is performed. Cytologic and histologic findings confirm liver metastasis. Pre-therapeutic tumor stage, therefore, is CT4A, CN1, PM1. Palliative chemotherapy is initiated. A 78-year-old male patient presents with weight loss and vomiting. In gastroscopy, a stenosing gastric cancer is found. CT detects no liver metastases. Longitudinal EUS shows thickening and infiltration of all wall layers. There is high suspicion of subserosal infiltration, but gastric serosa seems not to be penetrated. This finding corresponds with local stage T3 and, according to guidelines, perioperative chemotherapy would be appropriate. However, there is a small amount of ascites and the perigastric fluid is not completely anechoic. This finding is highly suspicious for peritoneal metastasis. Proof of peritoneal carcinosis would change the management of the patient significantly indicating palliative surgery. However, in this case, EUS-guided fine needle aspiration is not suited for proof of malignant ascites because the needle would penetrate the primary tumor, 
potentially being contaminated by tumor cells. Therefore, in this case, staging laparoscopy is performed to prove the palliative situation. Beyond pre-therapeutic M-staging, EUS and EUSFNA may play a pivotal role in detecting and diagnosing recurrence or late-distance spread of gastrointestinal cancer. This role is highlighted by the following case studies. Five years after surgery for ampullary cancer, a 72-year-old woman presents with weight loss. Transabdominal ultrasound demonstrates very small amounts of ascites. EUS detects several hypoechoic lymph nodes in the subdiaphragmal region in the neighborhood of the left adrenal gland and the celiac ganglia. Traditional B-mode criteria are typical for malignancy, and real-time elastography supports the suspicion of malignant lymph node infiltration by showing a hard pattern. EUS-guided biopsy is performed using a 22-gauge aspiration needle. Material is obtained for smear cytology as well as for histology. The aspirate shows normal lymphocytes and malignant infiltration of the lymph node by a well-differentiated adenocarcinoma. Turning the scope counterclockwise reveals ascites and peritoneal nodules, which are relatively hard. Again, EUS-guided biopsy is performed, targeting the peritoneal nodule. In order to minimize fluid aspiration, no suction is applied. EUS-guided aspiration of ascites carries a relevant risk of peritonitis and therefore has an associated overall morbidity of approximately 3.5%. To prevent infection of ascites, in this case intravenous antibiotics are administered at the time of intervention. Cytologic smears of ascites show papillary groups of epithelial cancer cells. Moreover, small tissue cores obtained from the peritoneal nodule prove peritoneal carcinosis. Immunostaining is positive for cytokeratin 7. Therefore, diagnosis in this case is late nodal and peritoneal metastasis of ampullary cancer. Palliative treatment is initiated. A 76-year-old woman with a history of colon cancer seven years previously is admitted to the hospital with hoarseness, acute dyspnea, and right femoral thrombosis. Chest CT not only detects thromboembolic material within the pulmonary arteries, but also enlarged mediastinal lymph nodes. Moreover, abdominal CT shows mass lesions of the right iliac fossa and at the vaginal stump 15 years after hysterectomy for large uterine leiomyoma. At the moment, there are various possible diagnostic explanations for these diagnostic findings. For example, malignant gynecological tumor with mediastinal lymph node metastases or late mediastinal and pelvic metastases of cecal cancer. Longitudinal EUS reproduces the CT findings of suspicious infracarinal pathological lymph nodes. As expected, these nodes are harder in comparison with the surrounding mediastinal tissue. EUS-guided biopsy is performed using a 22-gauge standard aspiration needle. Of course, heparin treatment has been interrupted before.
In good accordance to CT, radial EUS of the rectum shows the mass lesion of the vaginal stump. However, it is not clear whether this lesion represents the primary tumor of the mediastinal lymph node metastases, or rather a pelvic metastasis of the previous cecal cancer. Again, in elastography, this lesion codes blue, indicating a higher stiffness compared with the surrounding tissue. After having changed the echo endoscope, we perform a transrectal EUS guided biopsy. There is a lot of resistance to the 22 gauge needle, however, sufficient material is obtained for cytopathological examination. Prophylactic antibiotics have been shown to be dispensable in the case of transrectal EUS guided biopsy. Cytological smears and tissue cores from the mediastinal lymph nodes, as well as from the pelvic mass, show malignant infiltration by an adenocarcinoma. Tumor cells stain negative for cytokeratin 7 and TTF1, but positive for cytokeratin 20. This is a typical immunophenotype of intestinal adenocarcinoma, and diagnosis of late pelvic and mediastinal metastases of cecal adenocarcinoma is established. The last case describes a 61-year-old male patient who was treated two years previously with perioperative chemotherapy and surgery for locally advanced gastric cancer. Regular follow-up detects a splenic mass lesion. In abdominal and chest CT, there is no other suspicious lesion. Because of lung emphysema, percutaneous biopsy is considered to be risky, and therefore longitudinal EUS is performed. From a position within the jejunal pouch, there is direct endosonographic access to the spleen. The splenic lesion is hypoechoic and heterogeneous. Moreover, it is harder than the surrounding splenic tissue. A malignant splenic tumor is highly probable, and metastasis of gastric cancer is suspected. For EUS-guided biopsy, we use the 22-gauge aspiration needle. Several case series have shown EUS-guided biopsy of splenic lesions to be a safe and effective technique. No serious complications have been described. With only one needle pass, we are able to harvest material which is sufficient for cytological and histological examination. Both smear cytology and histology show a mixed population of lymphoid cells and infiltration of poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma within fragments. Immunostaining for cytokeratin 7, 5 and 6, for P63 and for TTF1 is negative. However, the tumor cells stain positive for a pan-cytokeratin marker and for the intestinal marker cytokeratin 20. This constellation confirms the diagnosis of splenic metastasis of gastric cancer. Consequently, splenectomy and adjuvant chemotherapy are planned. In conclusion, despite its limited operation range, EUS and EUS-guided fine needle biopsy may add value to percutaneous ultrasound and CT by detecting and proving occult distant metastases and malignant ascites in approximately 5 to 20% of cases of pancreaticobiliary and upper gastrointestinal tract cancer. To avoid false positive diagnoses, penetration of the aspiration needle through neoplastic infiltrations of the gastrointestinal wall must be avoided, and EUS guided fine needle biopsy should follow an inverse TNM schedule. Moreover, EUS and EUS guided fine needle biopsy play an important role for the detection and cytopathological proof of postoperative recurrence of pancreaticobiliary and gastrointestinal cancers.